Greetings to you in the name of Jesus. Today we are going to meditate a verse from the book of Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, God hath not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now we also have a song, don't we? God has not given to us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind wonderful song wonderful verse and uh, many of you may know this verse by heart but do we really know what Paul meant when he said what he said God has not given to us the spirit of fear but of in other words, abstractly, the spirit of power and the spirit of love and the spirit of sound mind. I'm going to explain the Greek words Paul is using in order for us to understand what really the Holy Spirit wants us to understand from 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Because when we say fear, it could be any fear, right? We are afraid of the climate. We are afraid of the government. We are afraid of the mosquitoes. We are afraid of ISIS, the great terrorist group which is massacring people. And we are afraid of tsunamis, cyclones, tornadoes. Hey, you know what? I am here in Houston, Texas. Texas is one of the places where certain hurricanes had hit in the past. And uh, so people can have different kinds of fear. So what fear did Paul talk about? Or to be precise, the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to talk about. Now, the word fear in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 in Greek is dahlia. Now don't uh, mistake it to the flower, dahlia flower. This is dahlia. Now, I'll explain what it is in a minute. But I, I need to bring a, a justification here. Terminological or etymological justification. Let me elucidate. Now, God is a just God, right? And he has not given to us the spirit of fear. Let me come to that in a minute. But if he has not given to us the spirit of fear, there is the spirit of fear which we need to fight against. For which he has given us a threefold spirit the spirit of power of love and of sound mind so if God is as we know a just God why would he give us three spirits or threefold spirit to fight against one spirit called the spirit of fear God is not like that God is a just God and if, if, there, if he is going to use three dimensions of his spirit or a threefold spirit, then the fear also should have three dimensions to it. Aha! That's what I'm going to explain to you first and foremost. Now, you may know, you may not know that I'm a clinical psychologist and we deal with fear as well as uh, psychosis of the human brain. There are three kinds of fear, phobia, paranoia, and dahlia. And here Paul is talking about dahlia. Now the dahlia fear, which actually dwells in the spirit of a human being. Now we know that we are a tripartite uh, composition, aren't we? We are, I believe in trichotomy, we are the spirit, soul, and body. So. The spirit controls or is supposed to control the soul and the body. Now, the dahlia Paul uses here is actually the spiritual fear. So, if there is dahlia in our lives, automatically there will be phobia and there will be paranoia. Phobia is the physical fear or the fear that engulfs a human's body. Now, the brain is part of our body. So phobias get into our body and these phobias become the known fears that we encounter. The fear of heights, it's acrophobia. 
Okay, the fear of closed rooms, claustrophobia, fear of crowds, oxlophobia, and you get all kinds of phobias. You know, husband phobia, wife phobia, all the phobias. So when you go to a psychiatrist, the psychiatrist will treat you uh, for these phobias. So phobias are the physical fears we have. And then when the fear enters the emotions of the human being and emotions, mind and will composite the soul. So emotions are in the soul. So when fear enters into the soul or the, or the emotions, that is called paranoia. Now, when such fears enter, those fears grow into becoming big, huge psychological disorders such as schizophrenia and manic depression and so on and so forth. So my dear friends, there are three kinds of fears that are that affect our, phys our physical being, our emotional being and our spiritual being. In other words, the spirit of uh, the, the phobia attacks our body. Paranoia attacks our soul and dahlia attacks our spirit. So if we have the dahlia, then automatically we should have phobia and paranoia. And that's why Paul is saying, God has not given to us the spirit of dahlia, the fear. Okay? Now, fear, you may say, is an emotion. Now, I disagree. Although phobia and uh, paranoia could be called as fear, not spirits of fear, dahlia is actually a spirit of fear because dahlia fear dwells in the spirit of man. When you read Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10, you remember when Eve uh, ate of the fruit and gave the fruit to Adam and both of them sinned and then they saw they were naked and they hid and uh, when God came and God called Adam, where are you? Adam says, Lord we heard your noise, verse 10, chapter 3 of Genesis, and we were afraid afraid and we hid ourselves. So my dear friends, over against the common notion that the first outcome of sin was shame, the first outcome of sin was in fact fear. And in the Hebrew Bible, it says Yahe. The, the Yahe translated into Greek becomes Delia. Okay. So Adam and Eve committed the, the sin and the first outcome of that sin was daily fear, the spiritual fear. So the first outcome of man's disobedience and man's sin against God caused the spirit of fear enter into humans. So my dear friends, unlike phobia and paranoia, daily is a spirit which does not come from God because God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but it has come out of sin so when we 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 were sinners weren't we before we accepted jesus we were sinners and he allowed that fear daily to enter into our lives and god is saying through paul god has not given to us the spirit of fear why because god has given to us the spirit of adoption wow we are adopted into the family of god and and we are adopted as sons of God, huyos. We are, I am a huyos of God. You are a huyos of God. Whether you are a man or a woman, you are adopted as a son of God. There are different words describing the child in the Greek language. Brephos, paedia, technon, and nepios, and huyos. And brephos, paedia, nepios, technon can be a male or a female. But the huyos is always a male. So God, whether you are a man or a woman, God has adopted you as a son. And if you ladies are upset about calling yourselves the son of God, then I, a guy, must be upset to call myself the bride of Christ. So let's not bring in the sexu sexual discrimination into this story, right? You, sister, are a son of God and I, mister, I am a the bride of Christ. I'm part of the bride of Christ. So there is no problem between the sexes here. So my dear friends, so 
God told through Paul that he has not given to us the spirit of Deilia. Okay, then what has he given us? He has given us a threefold spirit. Why? To fight the threefold fear. Okay, and I'm going to explain to you the Greek words of the of Second Timothy one seven because I have already explained the Greek words of fear. Are we ready? The devil first attacks our body. So the devil will attack our body and we will have phobias. Now don't mistake me. Don't think that I am saying that every phobia is from the devil. No. We may get panic attacks and phobias due to natural causes. Now in 2006, on April the 3rd, a small particle of the apple that I ate came and stuck, got stuck in the throat and I got a panic attack. So that's not a devil. But when you get a panic attack, then the panic atta attack will become a phobia. After that, every time when I see an apple, I, I'm scared to eat an apple because I, I don't like the, 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 the way it goes and gets uh, stuck in the throat. And also there are people who suffer from claustrophobia in closed rooms. So you cannot say that they are being attacked by the demons don't associate every phobia to a demon but the demons can use phobias to discourage us and make the phobia get into our soul from the body that way the phobia becoming or growing to become a paranoia and eventually the devil could make our phobias and paranoias become daily the spirit of fear are you with me so when we have phobias we go to psychiatrists and then they give us medication praise God for doctors praise God for medications because God has given wisdom with which they discover these medications but here is the, the formula to fight against uh, phobias God has given to us the spirit of power and the word power there is dunamis. Dunamis means strength. Strength. Not the authority, but the strength. Now many people I know, because they don't know the Greek rendering of 2 Timothy 1.7, they talk about authority. God has given us authority and we have to take authority over fear. I believe in authority and I believe in us taking authority over situations. But the rendering there for power is not authority, it's dunamis, the power, the strength. So God has given us, given to us the spirit of adoption which comes with the spirit of strength. We are powerful, we have the strength. So my dear friends, if you experience any kind of phobia, be it claustrophobia, agoraphobia, acrophobia, any phobia, just remind this verse to yourselves and say, God has given to me the dunamis, to the power to withstand this phobia. And if I feel like I'm suffocating, no, I'm not suffocating. Why? I have the power to breathe. I have power to extract the oxygen that is there in this uh, air. So even if I'm caught in a lift, in an elevator, I have the power, I have the dunamis to, to overcome the fear. So my dear friends, God has given to us the spirit of power, dunamis. And number two, the paranoia, the soul. Inside the soul, you get the mind, will and the emotion. And when emotions get uh, stirred up, phobias can get into our emotions from the physical realm into the emotional realm these fears can come in and phobias then grow to become paranoias and paranoias can be chronic and psychiatrists treat paranoias but uh, for that they, they need a lot of treatment and stuff but my dear friends we have the power of love and the power of sound mind now I'll explain that now, the sound mind, the sound mind, the Greek word is a long one, right? You know that 
wisdom is Sophia. Sophronomis. Sophronomis is the expression that is found in 2 Timothy 1 7. That means the wisdom which is completely balanced. It's not in any of the extremes. You know, in Ecclesiastes, Solomon says, don't try to be too wise. <laughs> Why? Because he was too wise. God gave wisdom to Solomon to extreme extents. And what happened? He failed. He died a sinner. We know that in the last days, 2 Samuel says, that, uh, that, that, that uh, Solomon backslid because of his wives. So my dear friends, uh, too much wisdom is not necessary. But God gives us the balanced amount of wisdom, right? You know, we, we, we get paranoid if we know too much. Do you know that? No, if you, if you take medications, try read, reading the, the little slip that comes with those medications, the pharmacokinetics, the pharmacology, the contraindications, the side effects, and blah, blah, blah. If you, I challenge you, if you are a medicine taker, get that slip and start reading. And when you start and finish reading, by the time you finish reading that slip, you will not want to take that tablet because it's threatening. If you know too much, it's threatening. So God has given to us the sound mind. The, 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 new, the King James Version has, not the New King James Version, the original 1611 King James Version of the English Bible has the right rendering as sound mind. Not too much on the foolish side, not too much on the wise side, but right in the middle. God has given to us the spirit of that Sophia for us to know the, the much that we need to know. Don't try to learn too much. You know why? Because in uh, Proverbs 1 and verse 7, the Bible says, the fear of the Lord itself is the beginning of wisdom. If we have the fear of the Lord, that fear is the awe, the, the respect, the honor. The, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when we have the beginning of wisdom, we will have a great deal of understanding of the fears that we have. So my dear friends, if you are suffering from emotional fear and if the doctors say that you have paranoias then all you have to do is to understand that I'm not going to think about it too much I'm not going to study about it too much I'm not going to worry about it too much God has given me enough wisdom in the Bible for me to understand that God has given me the wisdom and what I know of the word would suffice to sustain me okay now let's go to the final element of the dahlia. The fear in the spirit, dahlia. Now that is the most severest form of fears. You know, there are two ways in which the spiritual fear will attack somebody. Number one, is God pleased with me? Is God talking to me? Is he happy about me? Am I forgiven? Has God really forgiven me? Can God truly hear my prayers? That's number one. Number two, does God talk to me? Am I so important for God to talk to me? You know, these two, if, whether God hears me, number one, and whether God talks to me, number two, these two compose the spiritual fear in a Christian. My dear friends, a lot of us, don't uh, believe that God hears our prayers. Do you know why? Because we suffer from inferiority complexes. We suffer because of sad memories <coughs> of how we have uh, disobeyed God, disobeyed the word, committed some uh, mistakes. And we repent. And I know many people come to the altar to pray and all they do is repent and repent and repent and repent. Why? Because of that feeling of guilt, the, the complex of guilt. So, if they spend uh, half an hour praying, 25 minutes, they will be repenting. 
and the next five minutes they'll be just pleading God saying Lord I am a worm I am nothing I don't deserve to be blessed by you now God doesn't like it why because God forgives us not because the way we ask forgiveness is good but because he loves us remember God sent his only begotten son to this world while we were yet sinners Ephesians chapter 2 says while we were yet sinners Jesus came and died for us and resurrected us and has seated us with him while we were yet sinners not because we were any good now my dear friends I I am not at all a good person for God to come and die for me and for God to come and save me and use me. God came as a man and died for me because of his love for me. Why does he love me? Because he created me. He created me out of love and he created you out of love. That's agape. So to fight the spirit of fear in our spirit, we need to use the the, the spirit of love the spirit of love used in second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 is agape the unconditional love of god so god has loved us unconditionally not because we are any good or we are we are lovable please make a note of it god doesn't love you because you are lovable god loves you because his love is unconditional and because he loves you, he will listen to your prayers. Now, if, if some of you are out there worrying, I don't know whether God is hearing my prayers. I don't feel like hearing. Hey, you are not feelers. You are believers. Believe. Believe that the Lord hears your prayers. Not because you use fancy words and you are a hyper-spiritual holy person and God is obliged to listen to you. No. You don't have to attract God with fancy words. God is already attracted to you because of his love for you. He loves you too much that whatever you say, he listens. Hey, you know what? Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Do you know what that says? The fearful of God, or in other words, those who fear God, will talk among themselves and God will take heed. He'll give heed. He'll, he'll listen. And he will write it on a book of memories. So God is interested in listening to us. Not because we talk attractive. We are nice people. But because God loves us unconditionally. Now that is what I want to really emphasize and stress here. Because many of you who are watching this program. You pray. But then you end your prayer with the doubt. As to whether God heard you. I'll tell you something if your prayer is not satisfactory to you no problem God hears your prayers not because your prayers are attractive but because God loves you God loves you unconditionally and number two the word God speaks to us through the word now you may say well you know I read the Bible but it's so dry I don't feel like God talking again feel you know one of the great enemies besides the Satan, Satan is our arch enemy, one of the great enemies is feeling. Because if we don't feel like God talking to us, we, we, we decide God hasn't spoken to us. And that's why many people want to feel the presence of God, which is fine. Hey, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal guy. I'm a Pentecostal charismatic guy. I am all for feeling, but I don't go by feeling because it's not the feeling, it's believing. We are not called feelers, we are called believers, aren't we? So, we need to believe that the word of God has been written for us by God. And every single thing from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 has been written for you and for me. So when you read, even though you don't feel like God is talking to you, God is talking to you. Whether you like it or not, whether you feel it or not, whether you know it or not, you need to believe it because God is talking to you through his words. Our God is a talking God, isn't he? He's not an idol. He's not a statue. He's not just sitting under a tree for 3,000 years. You know, he is a talking God. Look at the size of your Bible. That's how much he has talked. But you know what the devil has done to the church? The devil has 
lied to the church saying that God is not interested in talking to us so we stick to attractive portions of the Bible such as the Gospels the New Testament and the Psalms but we don't read the other passages which perhaps we don't understand perhaps we, we don't feel like God talking to but I'll tell you from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22 all the 66 books of the Bible have been written for you because God loves you so no matter what passage of scripture you read even if it is a list of names in in, in first chronicles God is talking to you God is telling you hey this guy did that that guy did, did this right because of God's love so my dear friends the spirit of uh, the, the spiritual fear the spirit of fear in our spirit the spiritual fear would cause us to doubt God as to if he is listening to us or if he's talking to us so in 2 Timothy 1 7 we are not dealing with just an emotion called fear we are dealing with the spirit of fear I told you that in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10 this spirit of fear had entered Adam and Eve as a consequence of the sin that they committed against God when they disobeyed God they became fearful now that in Genesis shall I shall I show you a verse from Revelation chapter 21 look at verse 8 it has a list of people who are going to end up in hell and in that list you will see murderers idolaters adulterers and you know all these uh, sinful people but if you look at the first of the group you would see the fearful okay and in the King James Version which I used it's fearful and it's amazing it's, it's shocking actually look at the look at the list homongers uh, idolaters murderers right and then the, the leading group if you have a queue if you have a line of people waiting to be thrown into the lake of fire the first persons are going to be those who have the spirit of fear now I'll ask you a genuine question what about the normal fear that we have fear of um, fear of cockroaches fear of snakes fear of you know all of a sudden if there is a power failure then there'll be a fear if you are flying and if the, if the plane hits uh, if the flight hits uh, turbulence naturally there'll be a fear if there's an air pocket all of a sudden the plane plunges down you, you, you will feel fear so if you have these kinds of fears are you going to base on Revelation 21 8 and say that you are going to end up in hell no, no 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 God is talking about the spirit of fear which would take over the human being and from the moment the fear, spirit of fear controls the person the person is run by evil spirits because that's the spirit of fear and there are only two spirits three spirits actually human spirit holy spirit and evil spirit and the spirit of fear is not a human spirit because when God created humans he didn't create within themselves a, a, a pneuma toss a pneuma a, a spirit of fear so obviously 2 Timothy 1 7 talks about the spirit of fear as in an evil spirit context so my dear friends we need to be very careful lest these physical fears and the emotional fears don't remain in us for too long and causing the spirit of fear to engulf our lives and if we live by the spiritual fear which is daily then we will not pray would we why because we don't believe God to hear our prayers so many people many Christians I know have said it's pointless praying to God why because he doesn't listen to me why doesn't he listen to you because I'm not a good person ah, you see so the person stops praying and then the person stops reading the Bible why well I don't feel like God talking to me the Bible is very boring the sermons are very boring ah, why because the fear tells us that God is not talking to me because I'm not worthy so what happens is you will think about yourself as an unworthy worm so I'm good for nothing I don't talk to God God doesn't talk to me ah, the relationship the communion with God is severed and when you don't have the communion with God 
when you don't have the relationship with God, then obviously you cannot go to heaven because you will entertain sin. If you don't, if you don't have a good relationship with God, you cannot have a good relationship with people because the right relationship with God is called righteousness. So if we have the fear of talking to God and if we have the fear of not believing God talking to us through the word, then we are prone to unrighteousness, allowing a lot of sins to come into our lives. So my dear friends, I believe the Lord has spoken to you a lot through this little study that we studied. Okay, let me give you the synopsis of what we studied today. God has not given to us the spirit of fear. I'm not talking about the emotion of fear. I'm talking about, not talking about the feeling of fear. I'm talking about the spirit of fear. Okay? Dahlia. Which entered man after he first fell into sin in Genesis chapter 3. And what is the capability of this fear? This fear is able to take us all the way to hell. Why? Because Revelation 21, 8 lists the fearful as the topmost people among the, those who qualify to go to hell with the adulterers, homongers, sinners and uh, murderers, idol, idol worshippers. So the sp spirit of fear is very true and very dangerous. My dear friends, God has given to us a threefold spirit, the spirit of power, dunamis, the spirit of love, agape, and the spirit of a sound mind, the balanced mind, uh, sophronomies. Okay? So, I believe you will listen to this message over and over again and pray accordingly and overcome your fear. For your phobias, you know that God has given you the power and the strength. For your paranoias in your soul, you must understand that God has given you the balanced mind. Don't be too holy. Don't be too evil. Don't be too wise. Don't be too foolish. Just be in the balance of the Bible. Let the Bible dictate terms to you. You don't try to be too smart over and above the Bible. And then finally, the spirit of fear. Dahlia. The spiritual fear. The spirit of love. God's unconditional love has been poured on us. And because He loves us, He will listen to our prayers and He will talk to us. And in return, He doesn't expect anything but love. We have to give Him love in return. So my dear friends, I believe the Lord has spoken to you about fear. So don't be afraid. Let's be ready to be caught up with the Lord uh, in the rapture. And we will not end up in hell because only the fearful will end up in heaven. Because God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. May God bless you.